Elephant motor will be going right there. So and a six speed. A six speed. Yep. Finally made that decision too. <laughs> yep. Awesome. So. What's going on, guys? Alex Civiletti from Detroit Speed back again, and we've made a lot of progress here in the project shop on a couple cars we have in here, like Kevin's GTO, uh, Chris's Daytona. We're gonna just talk about what's been going on and give you guys a quick video update. I know a lot of you stay tuned to our project updates, photos on the website and on social media, but I think sometimes it's easier just to pick up the camera, walk around, talk about what we're working on. So unfortunately, um, Mark's not here. He's the one that's been working on the car, but Matt knows enough about it, um, about the process and what Mark's been working on. So I'll flip the camera around and let's talk about it. Right off the bat, Camaro subframe. Yep. Rather than an X Gen, is there a reason why? Uh, so for this application, it seemed to make more sense to start with the Camaro subframe. Uh, it has a nice arc to it, which kind of flowed into the factory charger rails. Um, yeah. So okay. obviously the hydroform rails tend to have a nice radius and finish to them anyway. So we figured for grafting it into this this body, it made a little bit more sense to start with the Camaro subframe, and then uh, being that the whole nose of the car is going to be scratch built. Um, you know, having these rail sections up front doesn't hurt us at all. Uh, the whole nose is going to be carbon. We'll have to build a core support and everything. So this just gives us a nice point to work from. Um, yeah. You know, instead of like on Kevin's GTO, we use the universal frame. And yeah, that's it. what I was going to say, you know, because this is Camaro subframe. That over there is the universal frame, which we'll get to in a minute. But yeah, you're right. I mean, other than, you know, you could see where it grafted it in and, you know, smoothed it out. Other than that, I mean, it it looks like it belongs. Yeah, the transition worked out really, really nice, so. Because I know before, um, when Mark had done the uh, subframe on Moe's charger, yep. he had found a way to bolt it in, so. Yeah, not necessarily found a way, but you know, lots of hours of, uh, you know, fatten mounts and reinforcement and stuff like that. Right. When we talked about it on this car. Um, you know, there's not necessarily a right or wrong way to do it, just, and having done that car once, uh, you know, you get an opportunity to do one different. So yeah, we exactly. Just just grab this one in, weld it in place, and I mean, ultimately, it's super strong. So and it looks like it belongs. And how big of a wheel is this too? Uh, so mocked up right now, that's a 19 by 10. We'll probably end up with a 19 by 10 and a half. We're gonna shoot for a 295 tire on the front. Okay. And it, like you said, I mean, it'll be full carbon, wide body. So yep. But that is a. Uh, that's a ton of tires for the front. Yep. And we'll actually push that wheel, being that it will be wide body, this will get pushed outboard. Mm -hmm. um, probably an inch or two to fill the fenders once we get the front clip on it. Okay. And then uh, on the back, we'll do a, uh, a 20 by 12 and a half with a 345. So get will have some meats on it. Perfect. Looks like he's got some of our X Gen Universal stuff laid out. Yep, so just barely starting on the rear here. Um, as far as mocking up the links, a lot of time we'll just start with a piece of three inch tubing. Yeah. You don't even need an axle housing. So this just allows us to start messing with uh, our link angles and heights and everything like that. Uh, like you mentioned, we've got some of our Universal kit here. And then there's also a couple of links from our first gen axle assembly that we will use as well. So it's kind of nice. You get a pile of them we like to start with. And you know, once you start fitting stuff up and see what makes sense, you just, you know, you've got a, your choice basically of placement. Right, exactly. And I think that's the beauty of the, you know, the X Gen kit too is, you know, you have all these assorted links. So, you know, those will get welded to the body. Yeah. So and then. If you've got a, like a flat surface you're working with, this right here is awesome. It's got all the plug weld holes in it. It's nice and flat and square. So typically this ends up being a forward lower link mount on the body. Yep. Um, so again, it's just basically give ourselves options as far as starting. We've got different different coilover mounts. You know, those are a set of upper mounts. Uh, we've got these style that he actually cut off. These were a lower, but you know, something like that. We could always mount in a vertical fashion okay, yeah, up in the yeah. car. So you just basically got to start fitting stuff and see see what kind of packaging you have. And then obviously see if the link angles make sense right. at right height. Yeah, and along with, you know, all that stuff you get in the kit, all your brackets, you know, we have the universal link as well. Um, so that's a four foot piece that you can pretty much like, you can, you know, cut it here, 
cut it here, cut it here. I mean, you can cut it anywhere you want and then weld that end in there and then you have a, a universal swivel length to whatever length you want it to be. So yeah. just, uh, you know, for fabricator level kits and you, know, you can pretty much adapt it to anything you wanted. So in this case, it's a 70 Daytona. Yeah. So that'd be pretty cool. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what else Mark comes up with. Yeah, this thing's gonna be super rad, so. Yeah, it's and moving, of course, quick. and you know, everyone, we, we've said it multiple times, but Elephant motor will be going right there, so. And a six speed. A six speed, yep. finally made that decision too, <laughs> yep. awesome. So. so three pedals, it'll have a man pedal in it and a thousand horsepower. Now, we'll walk over to the GTO chassis, but actually before, before we talk about the chassis, I wanna talk about what you guys did to the body over here. In case someone saw in some pictures, what were you guys trying to do with some of these marks here uh, so just I to mean, kind of give them an idea of uh, yeah, so, sort of the build process so like when anything comes in i mean obviously tons of cars can look nice with you know good paint good interior you never know what kind of work is underneath that stuff um ultimately this body will go get sandblasted right but you know we can't leave anything alone so as soon as it gets in here <laughs> we want to know what kind of work was done yeah we, we could tell from the inside that the quarters had been uh patched okay and so you know we just wanted to get into the outside here and see what kind of work was done because potentially we could be putting quarters on this thing again but you know the body works not very thick it looks like they hammered it uh it's butt welded it's been ground uh it's not been over ground you can see a little bit of the welds left okay yep so really and truly whoever did the quarters on this car um especially if it were somebody at home or a smaller shop i mean it's it's definitely a, a pretty nice job compared to a lot of stuff we've seen. Right. So it gives us hope that when it gets blasted and we get to see the whole thing, we might be able to salvage this. You know, if we got to do a little bit of touch up, hammer and dolly work, you know, that's that's pretty minor compared to doing a yeah, whole Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's the next step for the body. Um, you know, we've got the fenders in there and the valance and all that stuff's going to go get blasted. So we'll know exactly what we're working with. And um, in the time that these guys were stripping this car down and getting it ready for blasting uh we had the chassis blasted and i know josh has been making a whole lot of work on that so oh, yeah. let's talk about what josh did over here say what's up josh hey how you doing so 595 subframe universal uh same track with this with narrow frame so the 595 that's 59 and a half yep, okay the so the difference in this frame assembly is uh, you've got rectangle tube rails so this thing comes as a stub basically from here to just behind the control arm and, and you can uh, actually you can see that under here too if it'll focus but yeah that right there is where the x-gen stops yeah so this is this is more so meant for um, you know a lot of your Full frame vehicles you can stub them in real easy a lot of people have done pickup trucks mm -hmm. uh, this is the first a body we've done here in the shop but it's ultra convenient uh, we fixtured the frame up uh, basically took reference heights where we wanted the car to sit before we disassembled it okay so so this know. is essentially right here is going to be is this ride height yep yep so we okay jigged up a ride height uh, this sets our center line based off of the wheel diameter and tire diameter that we want okay um so that you know when we cut the original frame out the new frame goes right back in uh, basically where you, you ultimately want the car to sit at and so perfect yeah you know, we cut it here and cut it here so this is the original uh core support brackets uh frame horns okay see so yeah, that's original 69 gto yep then it's x gen and then right about here yep. is Same original right yeah so this is all original 1969 gto but josh went ahead and plated everything and smoothed it and i'll, I'll tell you you know two thumbs up for josh because man that looks amazing yep he's a real swell guy you killed it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, i mean that looks that looks awesome and ultimately when it gets powder coated you know it's a lot of people have a hard time telling that it wasn't like that originally unless you know these cars obviously you got the super nice forged spindles and rack and all that yeah but... exactly yeah so that's that's the giveaway the, the spindles the rack and all that but otherwise i mean i know there's a little bit of massaging that needs to be done on the frame rails here and then i know we got a kit to box all that in and then what's the plans for the rear uh the rear will be our straight up bolt-on a-body kit uh, we've got okay a full four link uh, it comes with chassis braces sway bar 
we'll do a nine inch housing in this with a okay. C7 floater kit. Um, that the Daytona will also get the C7 floater kit. So okay, cool. We really like that. I mean, just like as a package, the nine inch with the floater is super bulletproof. Yeah, because then you have floater axles and then C7 hubs. So if you wanted, you could run, you know, anything out to those cables, electronic parking brake, and you just have plenty of options as well. And yeah, even yeah. just the, the amount of brake packages that are out there for C7s yeah, too. Absolutely. So you've got the stock stuff, which is really nice for a lot of people. Uh, Bear makes a kit, AP Racing makes a kit, Brembo makes a kit. I yeah, I know, I think Willwood has a kit too. Oh, yeah, so sure. I mean, there's just, there's plenty of kits out there for it. But yeah, um, yeah now Josh is at the point where he's gotten the front pretty much dialed in and he's just working from the front to the back on this one. So he'll work on cleaning all this up, boxing everything in, getting it all nice and fresh. And I think we're also gonna, you know, section out the frame a little bit so we can fit a, a bigger wheel and tire package and some tubs for it, so. Yeah, this one will also be a 345 rear tire, so the frame will get, you know, it gets cut about there and gets replated, narrowed, and then obviously the tub gets installed in the body mm -hmm. uh, to allow for that 345 on a 20-inch wheel. I mean, 345, I mean, with this thing's getting an LT5, yep. so. LT5, six speed, same yeah, thing. Yeah, same deal, so <laughs> man pedal with 755 yep. horsepower, so that'll be pretty cool, but cool, let's, um, I'll keep moving then. Thank you, Matt. I'm gonna roll over to the other side now, see what Jason's been working on and Michael and Austin over in paint and body, but thanks, Josh. Thanks. Keep up the awesome work, man. Jason. What are you working on? Look at that. Trying out and get some Preliminary work done on some of the wiring here. That is so trick. So that's just the the Holly five inch dash. Yes, actually seven inch. Seven inch. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> My math is off. Yep, getting some getting some switches wired in, so that way they're virtual switches. So we want to have actual switches drilled into the dashboard, and you can change them around. So there won't be. Any switches at all, it's just all gonna be in the Holly unit. Yes, yes, most of them except for your ignition switch and headlight switch, but most everything will be, be all within there and it's all adjustable and and uh, we can do all kinds of extra uh, extra little things for air fuel and fuel pumps and pans and anything that Holly controls, we can, we can switch. Speaking of Holly, so all that's gonna be, it's all gonna be the Dominator. The yes, so yeah, we got uh, Got it coming through. Got a couple bulkheads running through for the transmission and engine mm -hmm. that are uh, so everything will all be oh, quick connects go through, and then uh, a couple items here they're going to do for the back of the stereo. But yeah, everything all all contained right back here. Those transmission we're going to have 480 drive by wire run through it. Pretty uh, much the whole deal. Oh, man, everything. this is uh, people don't I guess not a lot of people realize how much wiring really goes into all of these builds, but. Yeah, and it, you did all of this by hand essentially, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there'll be a lot more tidying up right now. We're still running, getting the links down front to back, just getting everything that needs to be up there, and and uh, every relay sorted out how many we need and what, what's the best placement, and uh, even then the little stuff we hadn't really you know had time to work out like the uh, courtesy lights and door jam switches, things that just right. uh, you just don't worry about until you get to that point and just have yeah. time to do it all do it all now while it's waiting between paint we got a little transition time so I'm trying to get some some stuff done in between before it gets, yeah. gets done and yeah get exactly it. cool yeah. man all right appreciate the update that's uh more power to you because i'm not a wiring guy so <laughs> well i love it so <laughs> perfect and then uh like jason mentioned this one is pretty much waiting to go to paint so We'll walk over there and talk to Austin and Michael about what they have going on. But before, we also have Deb's Firebird over here now. And this one's also waiting for paint. So once those guys are done working on the Mustang, Chris's Mustang that's over there, they'll, uh, we'll start tearing this one down after the C10. I think the C10 is next to get painted, which is gonna be kind of like a, a satin blue color. It'd be pretty neat. And then of course, Deb's Firebird, if you haven't seen the rendering, will be blue with some stripes, that'll focus. There you go. So that's the direction, but we'll go over, talk to Austin and Michael and see what they're working on. 
All right, let's see what Michael and Austin are working on. What are you doing, Austin? I'm uh, just prepping this car, getting ready for paint for the morning. Get it all cleaned up. What color are you painting it? <laughs> white. Michael's doing the same thing. <laughs> so this car is going to be Wimbledon white. I'm excited about that because the car is also going to have a red interior and that's going to look pretty beautiful. A little bit of white on red action, magnesium colored wheels. So what are you guys using right now? Uh, it's actually SX330. Um, so. so it's a PPG product? Yeah, panel prep. So just make sure everything's nice and clean. Yeah, get any oils or grease off the car. So then when you come in in the morning, you'll pretty much just nib it and then you'll be ready to go? No, we'll just basically we'll kind of go over it again in the morning the same way. Yep. Just in case anything gets on it during the night. And then we'll basically take it off and go from there. Perfect. It's all in the prep work, guys. That's why uh, every paint job you see at Detroit Speed, it's like a mirror finish, because these guys, they put in the hours, they put in the time to make sure everything's nice and clean, and then they lay it down. So, they actually, Michael already painted the fenders, so I'm gonna walk outside the paint booth, and I'll show you what the, uh, what the color we're going for is gonna look like, so. Thanks, guys. <laughs> there it is. Wimbledon white. See, so yeah, that's what we're going for. Like I said, red interior. So, I'm excited about it. Because it's kind of like a cream, off-white type color. It'll be cool. So, we're also going to be doing a video of Michael and Austin painting the shell of the car so be on the lookout for that in the next couple days we'll show you that jason stavola's car should be going back soon put a clutch in it a little bit of maintenance but thank you guys for tuning in and we'll have another project update for you coming in the near future so stay tuned <laughs>